good evening everyone and welcome to today's wonderful evening with dr murli bharadwaj and um, today we'll discuss around 200 questions and that gives us uh, a quick review of the concepts among the pyqs as we move forward so welcome to um, Dr. Mithuna, yes, and sir. many more who are online. So, good evening, Doctor. Good evening, Dr. Mithuna. Good evening, sir. So, we have Megha Swana and many more. Can you please punch? Is the voice loud and clear for all of you uh, online? Megha Swana. So, Doctor, yesterday, we were in the we were in the middle of uh, 100 questions so in continuation with that monoclonal antibody is used in cancer which one doctor the, on, the only monoclonal antibody here is rituximab sir so so rituximab so there is a complement mediated cytotoxicity CD20. So, CD20 and rituximab is a monoclonal antibody towards targeted towards CD20 is what we need to remember. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, CLL, rheumatoid arthritis and what is a granulometosis with polyangitis? It is also the other name for vaginous granulometosis. Vaginous, sir. ITP. Yes. Pemphigus vulgaris, myasthenia gravis. So in all these things, rituximab is the one which is useful. It is an antibody against the protein. CD20 is what you need to remember. Meghaswana and everybody, can you please punch? Is the voice loud and clear for all of you? Can you please punch? Yeah, it's a sincere request by most students to start the class on time. But yeah, now it is possible because we are teaching online. Students are online. Uh, yeah. Is my voice loud and clear for you, doctor, without interruption? Yes, sir. Good. Um, yeah. So, how do you find therapeutic index based upon this graph, doctor? Uh, therapeutic index is nothing but uh, therapeutic dose by effective dose. So it's 400 by 100. So typically the dose at which the toxic effects occur and the therapeutic effects occur, the ratio of the two. So here, TD50 by ED50. So TD50 happened to be 400, ED50 happened to be 100. So 400 by 4 will become, 400 by 100 will become, will become 4, sir. Yeah. So that's how we calculate. All these drugs can lead to gynecomastia, I mean conditions, except... Aratom, uh, aromatase inhibitors, sir, because they don't allow the conversion of testosterone to estrogen at the last stage. Correct. So gynecomastia is when testosterone converts into estrogen by the action of aromatase. So aromatase inhibitor prevent estrogen formation. That's the reason there is no way that they can lead to gynecomastia. Gynecomastia. 
Now, what are the examples is very important. So what are the examples of aromatase inhibitors we use in the clinical practice, doctor? Eczema Third generation was used. Anastrozole and letrozole. These are the common yes, clinically used uh, aromatase inhibitors that we need to remember. So now, doctor, 34 weeks pregnant lady presented with seizures BP 200 by 100. How do you want to treat? Uh, any option having mag magnesium sulfate is the answer. Sir. Very good. So, lebetalol and magnesium sulfate. Okay. So, what kind of antihypertensive is lebetalol? Is it an alpha blocker or a beta blocker or a combined? Uh, combined, sir. Alpha plus it beta. Alpha and also beta block. Beta. So how does thiazide act? It acts by inhibiting what? It is uh, sodium and uh, chloride pump the early DCT. Uh, it is a so sodium chloride in early part of the DCT uh, cell. So distal convolutes. Sodium chloride symporter is the one which is inhibited. Sodium chloride travel in the same direction that is inhibited in distal convoluted tubule. So that lead to typically thiazide diuretics will cause a retention of calcium. Please remember, loop diuretics. Loose calcium. Loose calcium. When it comes to potassium, what is the effect of thiazides? Uh, even they lose, they lose potassium, sir. They lose potassium, even loop diuretics also lose potassium into urine. But when it comes to calcium, loop diuretics lose calcium, but thiazide diuretics thiazide. retain calcium. calcium. So that is the reason serum calcium level will, because it is retained, will increase, magnesium level decrease, potassium level decrease, and sodium level also Decrease is what you need to remember. So, uh, what is the drug of choice for hyperthyroidism in the third trimester of pregnancy? Da? It is the carbimazole, methimazole can be used in the second and third trimester. But propyl thioracil is used in first trimester. Very good. And what is the mechanism of action of exenatide? It is uh, GLP analog, sir. A, it yeah. is the GLP. GLP is glucagon light, light peptide. peptide analog released from the gut. It will increase the glucose dependent insulin secretion. It's when you secretion. eat the food, you know, it will cause uh, the release uh, of. It slows the gastric emptying, also increases the release of insulin from pancreas. Very good. So whenever we food is consumed, so this is very important table to remember for tomorrow's exam, doctor. The small intestine secretes GLP-1. GLP-1 in turn will cause insulin production. So what is the role of DPP-4 enzyme, doctor? Naturally, DPP-4 enzyme in our body actually uh, antagonizes the effect of uh, GLP-1. But... Uh, if we give G, uh, D, DPP inhibitors, that will not happen and GLP will act naturally. But if you give GLP analogs, there is no effect of uh, DPP-4, naturally occurring DPP-4 uh, enzyme on the uh, analogs, GLP analogs. Yes, GLP-1 analogs act like GLP-1 and make pancreas to produce insulin. Whereas DPP-4 inhibitors inhibit the degradation of GLP-1 and that way the natural GLP-1, they will make it to live longer. So what are the DPP-4 inhibitors that you know, doctor? All glyptin, so citagliptin, uh, saxagliptin, linagliptin, alloglyptins. Very good. And what are the GLP-1 analogs that you know? Uh, one is exitinide. Liraglutide. Uh, Tides. Tides are all GLP-1 analogs. 
gliptins are all dpp4 inhibitors inhibitors please don't forget and uh, what are all the effects of glp1 doctor on pancreas uh firstly it increases the insulin secretion from pancreas islets and it also uh, Uh, suppresses glucagon secretion so it decreases the gastric emptying slows down the gastric emptying very good now what are the least teratogenic anti epileptic drug in pregnancy doctor so keep punching your answer it is uh, levetiracetam so uh, whenever i am asking question i am also asking mithuna who is immediately available at a arm length of distance and you are also available at much much more equal distance online so if you want to participate in the broadcast in this group discussion please let me know please uh, whatsapp me uh, then i'll send you the link and also before that i will send you the powerpoint you two can prepare and come and we discuss tons and tons loads and loads of questions a little more interesting way right so whenever you join any mcq discussion extempore you listen you will forget but if you prepare with the intent of speaking in the broadcast you will prepare remember it even tomorrow's exam also you will reproduce so that is a whole point of doing this exercise doctor so now so, so maybe this one has a very nice point uh methimazole usage in the first trimester causes aplasia cutis that's told by megas wana correct so aplasia cutis is caused by methimazole now in this what is the least teratogenic anti epileptic it's uh, levetiracetam sir very good levetiracetam so we had a questions we had one question in aims sir uh, asking that the patient is already on uh, valproate so what do we do so it's something uh, to do i think continue valproate and then shift to levetiracetam something like that mm. good i don't so, remember the questions yeah if you don't remember means you don't know the topic so that is a <laughs> uh that is a proven thing so what you need to do doctor is today only anti epileptics pata fat you need to do the revision in the notes and be ready any question on that now gliadin is present in which food except uh, quinoa sir it's present in rye barley and wheat all the all have glutens correct so quinoa seeds are very healthy to eat rye barley wheat are known to contain gliadin so quinoa is a nutrient which is um which do not contain gluten and very good alternative for the people who have celiac disease so what vitamin deficiencies occur in celiac disease doctor uh, copper zinc b12 folate uh, min- my minerals are copper and zinc so vitamin is b12 folate deficiency iron all Very intestinal good. absorbed so one end of the spectrum is celiac disease what is the other end that you find in dermatology associated with celiac uh dermatitis dermatitis herpetiformis 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 yes yes dermatitis herpetiformis uh, herpetiform is is what you need to remember One minute, doctor.
Just a moment. There is a small issue. Just one minute, eh, doctor. One minute. Yes, doctor. So let's get back. Sorry for uh, a short interruption. Now, flight tenular conjunctivitis is TB caused antigens. by hypersensitivity. Type 4 hypersensitivity. TB antigen.
So it is the tuberculous antigen to which flectangular conjunctivitis typically occur, a delayed hypersensitivity to mycobacterial antigen. A researcher wants to do a survey for vitamin A deficiency in school going children. What do you need to look for? Uh, sir, for this question, the answer is by dot. But we had a similar question in the first hundred. There the answer it says night blindness. Because I, I also had a doubt, sir. Uh, what are you looking for in children? Usually you see a bite out spot. That's, that's what which comes first, no, sir, even before night blindness. Yeah. So basically, so bite out answer. Objective sign. Uh, objective sign. If you look at uh, the symptom of night blindness, uh, it is very difficult to clinically elicit. So I'm not sure. We, we will recheck this uh, for a precise answer. Hmm? Okay. Sir. So now, keratometry is used to measure curvature. Sir. Hmm? Curvature of curvature of cornea, sir. Right. So. Uh, Curvature of the anterior surface of the cornea, if you want to know the axis of astigmatism, is what we call Flischker ring, where do we see that? Uh, it is in the keratoconus. Keratoconus. It is not KF ring. KF is Kaiser Flischker Wilson. ring. So yeah, that is one Wilson. thing which is seen in Wilson's disease. But in keratoconus, there is a ring which is typically called as the Klischka's ring. And it typically contains hemosiderin pigment which is deposited into basal epithelium is what you need to remember. The patient comes to you. Uh, this is... Yeah. So, if patient comes to you with complaint of pain, redness, and decrease in vision since one day, his anterior segment picture is being shown to you. What is the diagnosis, doctor? It is angle closure glaucoma, so acute angle closure glaucoma. Very good. So, typically, uh, a red eye, hazy edematous cornea, semi dilated pupil. These are all the features of acute angle closure glaucoma is what you need to remember. So what is the benefit of contact lens compared to spectacles? Uh, it decreases the peripheral abrasion, sir. Correct. So whenever you use uh, spectacles of very high power, it lead to, they are called as uh, uh, jack-in-box, jack in box aberrations they are called as optical aberrations so that is a, not the problem with contact lens is what you need to remember so what is this uh, typically doctor this is a dendritic ulcer caused by herpes excellent so dendritic ulcer slightly raised grayish and stain with rose bengal and they lead after healing they lead to a ghost dendrite uh, which remains in the superficial stroma once more you need to review uh, where will you give steroid where you don't give steroid among the various forms of herpes keratitis you have disciform keratitis dendritic keratitis, etc, etc. So you need to review that in the ophthalmology notes that I have given to you. Now, what is this pathology? This First, is what is the appearance called? Splash tomato appearance. Very good. Splash tomato appearance. Where do you see this, doctor? This is central uh, retinal vein occlusion. Right. So it is the vein that lead to tomato splash, not the artery. Now, what is this that is being shown here, Dr. Easy question? This is keratoconus. This is Munson sign. It's called as Munson sign where the lower eyelid has been uh, pushed 
into a V shape by the keratoconus is what you need to remember. When do you call social blindness, Doc? Uh, less than vision, less than three by sixty is social. Less than six by sixty is economical. Less than one by sixty is manifest or legal. And less, not even perceiving light as like complete blindness. Very good. So, hardiolum internum is the inflammation of which gland? Uh, Mebomium gland, sir. Very good. So, we have internal hardiolum, external hardiolum. So, staphylococcal abscess of the mebomian gland is internal hardiolum. Staphylococcus abscess of the lash follicle. Zs and mole. Zs and mole, so yeah. Very good. And it is tender at the margin of the eyelid is external. And within the tarsal is internal. internal. And external discharges through the skin, whereas internal discharges through either skin In, or conjunctiva. Or conjunctiva. So, whichever type of hardiolum is there, because it is a staphylococcal infection, whenever recurrent hardiolums are forming, then recurrent style, whenever it is forming, then uh, we need to check for? Uh, diabetes. Diabetes. Very good. So, doctor... So, very good. Megasvana adds a very good point. Cravo, we see, cherry red spot is what you need to remember. Now, 15-year-old boy having sore throat with swelling in the posterior to the posterior tonsillar pillar. Tonsils are it's, normal in size. What is you call it as? Uh, it is parapharyngeal abscess. So. If the tonsils would have been enlarged, or then it would have been peritonsillar Quin abscess. Quincy, Quincy, yes, sir. In peritonsillar abscess, uvula becomes shifted to the opposite side. Soft palate appears full. Then in parapharyngeal abscess, the tonsils appear normal in size, but the swelling occurs just posterior to posterior tonsillar pillar. If it is retropharyngeal abscess, then the swelling is in the midline. Typically, retropharyngeal originates from TB of the spine, that is the vertebral body. That's the reason retropharyngeal also is um, midline. Whenever the midline abscess. Or spine. Whereas, if it is from any superative lymphadenitis, then it will be on to one side. Then another important thing, trismus. Trismus is a feature which is seen in parapharyngeal abscess and masseteric space, but not in the case of the others, is what you need to remember. Now, office headache typically involves which sinus, doctor? Frontal, sir. It is the frontal sinus. Office headache involves frontal. frontal. Early morning headache on waking up, and again at the end of the day, whenever the headache is there, Diurnal variation it is called as. Then you will think of maxillary sinusitis. Patient wakes up without any pain because overnight there is a drainage but develops pain after a few hours after going to the office that lasts throughout the day. Then that is frontal, frontal. sinusitis. The headache which is there on waking up that may occur in frontal sinus because of the overnight drainage Vacuum headache, right? So now, malignant otitis externa is typically caused by. Can the online students can punch? Is the voice loud and clear for all of you, doctor? This is pseudomonas, sir. We discussed on the microbiology day before. Yes, absolutely. It is pseudomonas, which you need to remember. So, malignant otitis externa, typically in diabetics, immunocompromised, we have the malignant otitis externa. What is wrong about the Menian's disease, doctor? 
it is a low frequency hearing loss so it's not high frequency hearing loss very good so low frequency is a feature of minias otherwise it's idiopathic we do the ablation of the endolymphatic hydrops the problem is the drainage of the fluid from the endolymphatic duct leading to endolymphatic hydrops is the underlying cause tinnitus will be there is what you need to remember so this so is where we use uh, that um, uh, we use gentamicin right sir through the round window for ablation gentamicin sir gentamicin uh, yeah. we keep a wick wick through the round window through the correct that is called we do the um, vestibulectomy by using the intraventricular vestibular gentamicin um, as a way to ablate it and remember wolfram syndrome uh, has an association uh, with a low frequency hearing loss any viral infections can cause the low frequency hearing low frequency loss hearing loss now doctor um uh, Epstein Barr virus. Sorry, I lost power in the home, uh, but it's okay. One minute. Yeah. Let me get some water. so good doctor so welcome back so what is not associated with ebv it is uh, it is leukoplakia sir but not erythroplakia hmm anyway nasopharyngeal carcinoma burkitt's lymphoma infectious mononucleosis these are all associated and uh, x link lymphoproliferative syndrome oral leukoplakia in aids patients is because of epstein barr virus definitely remember so how do you treat nasopharyngeal carcinoma it's highly radio, radio sensitive tumor so radiotherapy radiotherapy so we use external beam radiotherapy and chemotherapy most common presentation of nasopharyngeal carcinoma is uh, asymptomatic uh, lymph node enlargement of the neck so good so any neck node enlargement whenever it is there you need to look for and most common to be involved is which group doctor uh, deep cervical sir upper posterior deep cervical upper posterior deep cervical, deep cervical. and unilateral serous otitis media very important multiple cranial nerve palsies whenever they occur multiple cranial nerve palsies then uh, there is a possibility of nasopharyngeal carcinoma is what we need to basically remember this is all diagnostic in csf rhinorrhea except uh sorry for the disturbance of my dad uh okay 
except uh, x ray of paranasal sinuses very good so um we use beta 2 transferrin to identify the csf and ct cisternography nasal endoscopy all these are used in order to identify the csf is what we need to basically remember so this is the nasal endoscopy which can help to localize the csf leak is what we need to remember this is another example of a hr ct coronal and axial cuts to see the bony defects whenever there is any csf leakage it can be the uh, paranasal bones fracture can lead to so uh, now doctor double decidual sign where do we see in uh, intrauterine pregnancy sir it's the first sign to be seen correct so if you want to differentiate ectopic pregnancy from early intrauterine pregnancy and the pseudo sac of the ectopic pregnancy we use double decidual around 5.5 to 6 weeks we identify so we visualize the gestational sac as a echogenic ring formed by the decidua capsularis and the chorion levae eccentrically located within the decidua vera so that they form two um decidual layers if it were to be early intrauterine pregnancy so you can see earliest sign is double decidual sign typically seen around 4 and 1/2 to 5 weeks initially eccentric in location and it excludes any ectopic pregnancies pseudo gestational sac is what you need to remember so once more you can see this is the decidua parietalis which is there on the outer part and the decidua basalis which is there in the inner part and the capsularis so this typically give the double decidual sign so this is the decidua parietalis decidua capsularis decidua basalis um and this is the uterine cavity so double decidual sign a lady with met with an accident without wearing helmet and her head has hit the ground she is suffering from minor scratches she comes back with headache and running nose then you will think of csf rhinorrhea fracture very, very common so um using the handkerchief test it's called handkerchief test it doesn't uh, harden sir even after a long time unlike like the nasal mucus which hardens when exposed to air correct now what are the most consistent and largest ethmoidal air cell duct ethmoid bulla sir ethmoid bulla so it is the most consistent air cell so you need to know that haller cells are the ethmoidal cells that pneumatize inferior to the orbit towards the interior of the maxillary sinus um is what we need to remember so it is the ethmoidal bulla which is the one which is uh, largest so where do you have diarrhea where there is a odorless stool it is uh, bacterial dysentery sir so amoebic dysentery versus bacterial dysentery which is more frequent Uh, more frequent patients more frequent is back bacillary bacterial dysentery and every time the stool is passed it is of small amount in bacillary and typically it is mainly watery bacillary dysentery adorless is bacillary dysentery bright red is bacillary dysentery alkaline is bacillary dysentery adherent to the container is bacillary there is amoebic does not adhere to the container Contain. is what you need to remember i leave the literature for you to know differences between amoebic versus bacillary 
dysentery doctor. So what do you get in amoebic dysentery? Charcot laden crystals, which are the hexagonal structures formed by the breakdown of isnophils, which are seen in the parasitic diseases, is what we need to remember. Now, what is the main opener of Eustachian tube duct? Tensor valley palatinism. And what is the nerve supply? Uh, Trigeminal. So, tensor veli palati is naru to? Median pterygoid. Median pterygoid. Which, which is trigeminal. The mandibular, mandibular nerve of trigeminal. Fifth cranial nerve. That's right. Trigeminal. So, you should know there is one levator veli palati, tensor veli palati, and uh, palatoglossus. Palatopharyngeus, palatine tonsil, musculae, uvulae. So these are all the things that you need to be very sure about. So most common amino acid in collagen, doctor? It's glycine. Because glycine is very small. It can fit anywhere. Yeah. Which bond uh, does, not, uh, does not break during denaturation of protein? Peptide bond doesn't. Which mineral is a cofactor of carbonic anhydrase? Zinc, sir. Which molecule causes transport of ammonia from the brain to the liver? Uh, glutamine. That's the reason whenever there is any hyperammonemia. Why hyperammonemia leads to development of hepatic encephalopathy doctor? Hepatic encephalopathy. All because that whenever ammonia is high, it converts the it is picked up by glutamate. And glutamate becomes glutamine. From where is this glutamate formed? It is formed from succinyl coa. So more and more ammonia, more and more glutamate need to be formed from succinyl coa, and all succinyl coa is used for. Glutamate formation. Arginyl CoA is intermediate of citric acid cycle. Citric acid cycle, sir. Krebs. Yeah. Arginyl CoA is depleted, citric acid cycle stops. And if citric acid cycle stops, the brain, which mainly depends on glucose, doesn't know how to metabolize glucose. That's the reason it suffers. Hepatic encephalopathy is what you need to remember. So, this is how you need to remember. The more and more glutamate becomes glutamine to capture ammonia whenever hepatic encephalopathy is there, more and more alpha ketoglutarate is consumed. So, succinyl CoA is not formed. So, if it doesn't form, TCA cycle stops. If it stops, then glycolytic end product pyruvate cannot go into creating energy. So, that is the reason a lot of bad things happen to the brain. Pyruvate is formed from which amino acid during transamination, doctor? Alanine, serine, glycine. Arginine, phenylalanine, tyrosine, valine. In all these scenarios, alanine and serine become pyruvate. pyruvate. Is what you need to remember. So, alanine, glycine, cysteine, serine form pyruvate. That forms acetyl CoA. Isoleucine, leucine, tryptophan become acetyl CoA. Leucine, lysine, phenylalanine, tyrosine form directly aceto acetyl CoA. That's the reason they are called ketogenic. Keto. Ketogenic, yes, sir. In that, the lysine is called purely ketogenic. ketogenic. It doesn't know anything else. It doesn't know how to form pyruvate or oxaloacetate. Any of this citric acid cycle intermediates formed, they are all called glucogenic amino acids. Right? Yes. Any of this citric acid cycle intermediates, if these amino acids convert into, then this typically lead to glucose formation. No? That's the reason they are called glucogenic. Whereas, if they come and form acetoacetyl-CoA, 
Acetoacetyl-CoA typically is the precursor for beta-hydroxybutyrate okay. and uh, the ketone bodies. So that is the reason leucine, lysine, phenylalanine, tyrosine are called ketogenic. ketogenic. So the tyrosine is also glucogenic. glucogenic. Phenylalanine also is glucogenic. glucogenic. It even become fumarate. Similarly, um, uh, if you look at leucine, leucine, isoleucine, tryptophan can directly form uh, acetyl-CoA. Uh, so, but lysine has no other way, only it can form acetoacetyl-CoA. Purely ketogenic, ketogenic is what we need to remember now. Now, what is this appearance typically is due to? Casal necklace and niacin deficiency, sir. Very good. Castle neck necklace, niacin deficiency, pellagra is what you should remember. So, what is the inhibitor of gluconeogenesis, doc? Insulin. Very good. So, Typically, when will simple to remember? When will gluconeogenesis occur if you don't have glucose? Correct? Yes, sir. When you don't have glucose, that means when you are starving, when you have hypoglycemia, then who will be produced? Glucagon, growth hormone, so that they lead to gluconeogenesis. If you are feeding well fed, that stimulates insulin. Because when you feed well, you get hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia stimulates insulin. When insulin is high means body doesn't produce glucose. Because the very fact that insulin is high means there is hyperglycemia. Already person fed very well. Yeah. That's what you need to remember. So Insulin mediates dephosphorylation of PFK2. And that is how it inhibits the gluconeogenesis is what you need to remember. Now, there is PFK2 involved for the fructose 6-phosphate to become fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. Yes, we require PFK2. Right? P of K2 dephosphorylation will inhibit the gluconeogenesis from happening. Complex 4 in electron transport chain is inhibited by cyanide and carbon monoxide. Very good. So you should know each of these complexes. What are the inhibitors? This is purely Bhatti Marnival item, but you need to. Complex 1 is NADH CoQ. Proteinone, complex 3, antimycin A, 4, cyanide and carbon monoxide, ADP synthase by oligomycin, ADP, ATP translocase by ectractylocyte is what you need to understand. So, doctor, uh, what is found in RNA but not DNA? Uh, uh, your acyl is seen in RNA, so it's not seen in DNA. Now, diarrhea, vomiting after having milk. Galt, galt deficiency. Very good. So you have galt deficiency more severe, whereas galactokinase deficiency is milder, is what you need to remember. Which glycosaminoglycan is found in synovial fluid? It's hyaluronic acid, sir. Very good. So, among the glycosaminoglycan, sulfate-free is hyaluronic acid. Sulfate containing a chondroitin sulfate, dermatone sulfate, keraton sulfate, heparin, heparon sulfate, etc., etc. So, uh, good. So, yeah. most abundant is uh, chondroitin sulfate and uh, keratin sulfate is seen in the cornea. So, it's like uh, required to keep the transparency of the cornea. And then uh, heparin sulfate has an antithrombotic effect, I think so. Yes. Heparin. Yeah, that's right. Heparin. So, 
heparin sulfate heparin everything same vitamin yeah. b1 deficiency how do you monitor transcutaneous activity so enzyme activity of transcutaneous very good which glutamate glut receptor is found in skeletal muscle four four can you quickly tell all the glut receptors where is glut one glut one is seen in almost most of the cells sir it's ubiquitous it's present everywhere and uh, glut 2 is seen in liver uh, beta cells of pancreas hypothalamus in small intestines glut 3 is seen in all those neurogenic neuro placenta uh, testes in brain glut 4 is seen in muscle skeletal and cardiac muscle and fat glut 5 is seen in uh, sperm kidneys uh, mucosal surfaces so two points you need to remember Which glut receptor is controlled by insulin? Four. And which is involved not only in glucose transport but fructose transport? Glut five. Very good. Now urea is the end product of protein metabolism. Now which type of necrosis in brain? Liquefactive necrosis. Sickle cell and urea is autosomal recessive. Von Willebrand is autosomal dominant. You should know the list of conditions generally. structural protein disorders are all autosomal dominant and rate limiting enzyme deficiencies are all autosomal recessive autosomal recessive is what you need to remember now acute stage of disease we have igm in cell injury calcium is involved microfilaria where nucleus was in the tail tip with the sheath which is bright pink on gene sustaining what is that brugia malai brugia malai sir brugia malai malai so this is one of the favorite question of the examiner doctor how do you remember only god knows god save the queen so uh brugia malai sheath is bright pink gene sir sheet is colorless timori tall blunt nuclei extending up to the tip of the tail is mansonella sheet is never present so present for mansonella so tail is enucleate and the short head space is vicariaria bankrupti short head space with tall um tall with the nuclei irregularly spaced at the tip is lobe lobe So please remember all this stupid things until exam now pdg of b mutation is seen in astrocytoma, astrocytoma. placental derived growth factor very good so most common mediastinal tumor is thyroid Hi, all anterior and uh, amongst the three anterior uh, mediastinal tumors are common in that thymoma is most common sir And most common middle is lymphoma. Most common lymphoma. posterior, posterior. neurogenic tumors. Type of cardiomyopathy in alcoholic is dilated. Yesterday you told us, sir. Yeah. So alcohol, cocaine, methamphetamine, chemotherapy, viral, Chagas, HIV, Lyme disease, they're all dilated. Is what we need to remember. Amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, familial, hemochromatosis, fibrin. they're all restricted what is the earliest feature in diabetic nephropathy microalbuminuria mm. and pain. albumin I mean, mcv less than 80 mchc less than 30 what type of anemia microcytic hypochromic anemia so anemia of chronic disease is normochromic normocytic whereas thalassemia anemia of chronic disease and iron deficiency is hypochromic microcytic microcytic normocytic macrocytic is vitamin b12 and normocytic mac folate so fundamentally anemia of chronic disease lot of times is normochromic normocytic but it can even be microcytic hypochromic and microcytic is recognized by low mchc and low, low mc less than 80 so patient having macrocytic rbc means megaloblastic anemia Girl, short statured, spaced nipples, primary amenorrhea. Turners. Turners. Edema and proteinuria, nephrotic. Nephrotic. Syndrome. So, in acute pancreatitis, what calcium problem you will see? 
So what are the causes of hypercalcemia? What are the causes of hypercalcemia? Whether you're giving calcium supplementation, hyperparathyroidism, iatrogenic, uh, multiple myeloma, Melcalculi syndrome, lithium uh, treatment, uh, parathyroid hypoplasia or adi- parathyroid adenoma, alcohol and uh, any kind of tumors of the parathyroid. Uh, tumors were club, lung cancer, squamous cell and uh, breast cancer. good so uh so these are the things that we need to ultimately remember when it comes to uh, come to hypocalcemia please don't forget uh any hypothyroidism hungry bone syndrome pseudo hypoparathyroidism and hypoparathyroidism any of them can lead to development of the hypocalcemia hypo so that is all the story of some of these pyq's doctor uh how much time we had been laboring one hour one hour sir in one hour we finished around 60 questions so we take a break and uh, if possible later part of the day we will rejoin Is it fine, doctor? So no issue, sir. Keep studying, keep studying, and uh, now it is very easy. You know, you two can join into the online, and beforehand, I will give you the questions, prepare for them, and then join. A lot of times, if the teacher is online, one hour must, right? But multiple one hours we can always plan in the day. at least two to three multiple one hours we can plan okay so thank you very much for joining and uh, see you back bye so take care